I'm Brian Fowler, president of Blind Creek Resources Limited, listed on the TSX Venture Exchange, ticker symbol BCK. Blind Creek is focused in the Yukon, Northwest Territories, and British Columbia. The company's key property is the Blend Project, one of the largest undeveloped lead-zinc silver deposits in Western Canada, plus plans to advance the recently acquired, fully permitted historic engineer gold mine in the Atlan District of Northwestern BC. Check us out at blindcreekresources.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is home ownership consultant Ross Kay from the wealthy homeowner.ca. Welcome back to the show, Ross. Thanks for having me back, Jim. Ross, last week, ThinkPoll revealed they were threatened with a lawsuit over an article they published about foreign buyers. Do you believe this story? And what are your thoughts on the matter? Well, I think it's highly likely, uh, Jim, that that, that that took place. And I say that because um, I know in myself over the last, uh, probably the last seven years, I've received uh, several uh, letters from the Canadian Real Estate Association um, threatening me to... Uh, uh, withdraw what I, what I was talking about because they they uh, relied upon uh, certain clauses in the MLS systems uh, to hide the fa- a few a few facts from the public. Um, so when you receive those letters the first time, uh, they're quite shocking and uh, you're ill prepared for them. You should be making a quick call to your lawyer and finding out if uh, you have done anything wrong or what the letter really means. I think in the case you're referring to with the Thinkpool, even though I'm not I'm not familiar with the uh, the publication as an entity itself, uh, in that case I believe they they had the the lawsuit threatened by the real estate board had something to do with uh, people's names being disclosed and the fact that the real estate board's members uh, are not legally allowed to release uh, people's names because of the uh, privacy, uh, Papedia, the privacy law in Canada. What I'll tell your listeners is, is this, there is a, uh, a high, a high, a high truth in the statement that realtors should not be giving out the owner's names of properties that are sold. And they should not even be giving out selling information on the properties until, the, until the property is closed and been registered with the land titles office. Once a property is registered with the land titles office, the selling price and a few of the details are available to the public, uh, as they should be. And uh, there really is no, even though there's still technically, in my personal opinion, there is a, a, a privacy issue with that. Um, it has been longstanding uh, practice across Canada that the buyers and the sellers' names are available if someone wants to go and search uh, at the land trip. Uh, land registry office. Uh, in those cases, you, as the person seeking that information, you have to provide uh, verification with who you are. You have to pay a nominal fee to get the information. So the privacy issue is probably a little bit more protected. I think the problem with this article was is that they were specifically targeting foreign buyers and they were releasing the names of foreign buyers, which should not be a Papedia issue at all and kind of thwarts the argument the Real Estate Board in Greater Vancouver did, uh, uh, the Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver was complaining about. Uh, the, the listeners should understand this. Reporters with the major media in Canada have been threatened by organized real estate to even challenge the statistics that are released. Uh, there are major reporters with major newspapers out in British Columbia who have told me the reason they can't question the authority of the benchmark prices, average selling prices, MLS HPI, uh, Terranet National Bank HPI, is because that the, the, the people who own those, Korea, um, National Bank and Terranet, um, have threatened uh, that there would be lawsuits if there was any suggestion that those prices were were faulty. Um, they those bodies rely upon their footnotes that most reporters never read. 
Um, and those footnotes state that we're not really giving you data. We're giving you stats. These stats are skewed to our favor. These stats are created by us for a specific purpose of making our members more commission. The footnotes all clearly lay this out. So when the, the boards released its stats, the boards are releasing stats fair and square. I mean, they're releasing stats. That they don't tell the truth, but they're warning everybody in the footnotes if you know how to read the footnotes. Um, then they put pressure on the, the, the journalists to not challenge the, uh, credibility, the, the, uh, validity of those, those stats. Because they say, oh, well, we're not saying what you're saying what they are. We're saying there are stats. We know what they mean. They're, we created them, so they're right. Um, that's really what we're looking at here with, with ThinkPoll. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a grander issue. There's copyright issues. There are, uh, MLS rules and regulations. Uh, think poll just simply went too far by publishing names. Had they pulled back and not published the names of the people, they probably would have gotten away with it. Same thing happened here in Toronto. Uh, a techie guy who wants to make money building a website where he can, he can take information from real estate boards and give it to the public for his own personal financial gain was shut down because he released, um, addresses with selling prices pre-closing open to the public. Um, those, 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 even though I know a lot of your listeners are going to say, well, we, that we need that information or that information could, should be out there. If you really need that information, you can call a realtor up and they'll give it to you. What you can have is open access to all the information that's out there. Um, and that's really what I think this uh, think poll issue came down to. We'll have more from Ross K right after the break. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia, Saskatchewan, and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the pink symbol ABN AF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese, Inc., listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Welcome back. We're speaking with Ross Clark. Ross, a listener sent us this question. According to the Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver's October data, Vancouver single-family detached home prices are at an all-time high. But a realtor also told me that most of the homes above $3 million are selling at a 10 to 15% discount to their 2016 assessed value. Can both these things be true at the same time? Can they both be true at the same time? Sure, they can. They can both be true. This actually goes back to your first question that you asked about Think Poll and why the board threatened the lawsuit with them uh, releasing the information. In order for us to be able to make commentary about the housing market, this, this, this is how um, much work was involved to set our own ground rules, Jim. There are 69 unique real estate boards across Canada. Those 69 real estate boards have a different set of MLS rules and regulations. Each each individual of the 69 all have different rules. There are not two boards that have the exact same rules and regulations. Those rules and regulations impact the data that goes into that real estate board's uh, monthly uh, monthly release. That data, when it gets converted into stats, also has a varying degree of a change from every single real estate board in Canada. So unless you know, now you've got to remember, each real estate board has over a hundred rules and regulations related to real estate data. To the, to the MLS, uh, sold, bought, sold listing information that, that, uh, realtors, uh, submit to the board every single day. 
Multiply by 100 by 69. Now we're at almost 7, 000, over 7,000. Not almost. It's well over 7,000. It's probably closer to 9,000 um, rules and regulations that are unique. A single piece of data, a single home information, the information about a home that was listed for sale on the market for a given period of time, and then it finally sold or didn't sell. That information depending on the real estate board that you're at, changes. How that information is um, included in the local stats package is changing. That's why the easiest example for any of your listeners is to look at the benchmark price in Vancouver and where it traveled, The you know, those high, crazy 30% gains that you were recorded uh, in 2016, and then look at Toronto. And you'll, and, or even go closer. You can look at Calgary. Calgary's benchmark prices in terms of percentage change is the average selling price. It's always been that way because their methodology for cal- calculating the benchmark price, no matter what anybody tells you, is different than Vancouver's. The British Columbia Real Estate Association, in conjunction with Greater, Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver, they created the, the benchmark methodology originally. That's why their methodology is different than the one in Toronto. It's why the Toronto benchmark price is like Calgary's. It always matches up with average selling price. Vancouver's uh, lag is far more greater, which has been emphasized because of the uh, foreign buyer tax coming in, the change to your market rolling over, and uh, the move with condominiums uh, this spring. Their methodology that they're using to come up there with the, the properties that they're using in their uh, calculations of benchmark prices is different, totally different than what happens in uh, Calgary or Toronto for the sake of the argument. This happens thir- around the 69 real estate boards across Canada. These variances happen. So when you're hearing about the, the Vancouver single family detached home prices, the real estate board is claiming that they're at a whole all time high. It's because the methodology is flawed. And it's why the realtor told this fa- this fellow, I'm assuming it's a guy, um, that there is a, uh, the 3 million properties are selling at a 10 to 15% discount of their 2016 assessed values. You have to remember, 2016 assessed values were below peak price. Peak price in Vancouver still went up about another 17% from the assessed values. The way the, the methodology works, that's simply what happened. So the 10 to 15% discount he's talking about is actually between a 30 and a 34% discount. And that's true. Now, not all, pri- not, not all properties are going to be discounted at 30%. Okay? This is where the confusion starts p- taking place because of this benchmark mythology, um, the, the myth that is the benchmark price. What happens in, in, a, in, a, in a market is when the prices are rising in a certain category of home, whether it be single detached or condominiums, the building envelope that that house sits on, whether it's a condominium or it's, it's a single detached, becomes more and more and more expensive. It becomes assumes a disproportionate amount of the entire property's value. Property means land and uh, building. If you look at some of the the assessments of properties, 95% of the property's values, single detached homes in Greater Vancouver, 95% was the assessment office that credited that towards the land, and only 5% towards the building. In other in other single detached homes, um, 60% of the uh, value was a uh, dedicated to the land, and 40% was dedicated to the house. Where you see the earliest and the quickest swings, which is why we told everybody a year ago these prices are already off 28%, is because the houses that are 95% um, land value and only 5% house, they're the ones that drop the quickest. And those houses are the ones that are already down the 30% off of peak price which equates to 15 to 17% off the assessed values. Um, that's where the confusion happens here. The fella is listening to basically 
um, about five different measures of home price change, and he's assuming that they're all the same. Benchmark price is an irrational, bad methodology. Um, again, the benchmark price measures whether or not you put a new toilet in the house and what quality of that toilet uh, you put in, and does that toilet raise the overall value of your house. And they, they use components of a home to come up with these houses. What you have to understand is, folks, the components simply go up with the average selling price. That's why over time, they end right back up the average selling price. Just the way the Greater Vancouver does it takes a lot longer than the, where the other real estate boards get there. So he's looking at that. Then he's talking to a realtor who's saying, well, yeah, how does, we're seeing them sell at 10 to 15% off their 2016 assessed values. Right. He, they're assuming the assessed value is July the 1st of 2015 and, um, or which equates like coming up for your 2016, uh, July valuations. And, uh, they're, they're not considering that after the, me- the way that the property tax is set, uh, methodology works for value. Houses still continue to increase another 15 to 70 percent on the other side. So peak price was even higher. You should always be looking at peak price for the specific home you're looking at buying and then where the price is today. You look at the old price that that home would have sold at at a previous time and what it would sell at today. That's the only way to understand. Pricing uh, in terms of rising and falling, they never increase the way that the real estate boards, CMHC, the banks tell you as a percentage. Each individual property changes on its own merits. And it also changes depending on the type of market that is functioning at the time that that valuation is being uh, determined. So this guy has a question. He's confused. What he's confused is, is because everybody tells them the metric they're using to determine price is the right one. But all five metrics that I'm referencing in this discussion that, that this question really involves are two, are five totally different metrics. Uh, the fellow would need to know to be asking, uh, what is, what does he want to do with the price, uh, metric that he's looking at? He's got to look at the timing when those price metrics need to be reflective of. And then he's got to have the specific property that he's looking at so that uh, that property is assessed in that way. Ross, is it true that houses on the west side of Vancouver are selling before their or below their 2016 assessed value? Will the 2017 assessment show a price decline from 2016 at the high end of the detached market? Okay, so yes, obviously they're selling at below their 2016 assessed value for certain categories of homes. Because a home buyer who was qualified to spend $2 million in 2016 is still qualified. He, he's not impacted by these mortgage rules to spend two hundred or $2 million in 2017. So the house that he's buying is a $2 million house. This is where all of your listeners are, have been confused by organized real estate for the last uh, 30, 40 years, which I continue to say on your show, selling prices are, have nothing to do with the house value. It's got to do with the buyer's ability to pay. When these metrics were first released, they were called the average purchase price. Somehow, around 2003, organized real estate let it slip to become the average selling price as they were were trying to, to uh, promote their members. They wanted to pretend that they knew what they were talking about with housing markets. They did their first charts, their first graphs, their first uh, comment. The economists came out uh, for the boards and started talking this way. It, so it went from average purchase price, which I also add in the word paid, average purchase price paid, uh, to becoming the average selling price. Average selling price is a does not exist. Okay, it, it it exists, but it is a highly, highly, highly complicated calculation, which is beyond the scope of anyone in the world today. Anybody who questioned me, Google R P P I. 
space, OECD report. You're going to go there and you're going to find all of the top world leading economists from every single country in the world came together to find out how could we come up with the average selling price. They published a great huge work where it included with they can't do it. Um, we can, and that's why we're, that's why, um, we're able to do what we're, what we do with our forecast. Because we look at it at an individual property basis, and we know what variables are go- are going to impact that price. Uh, in this case, yes, Vancouver, uh, there are houses in Vancouver selling at probably right now about 17, 18, 20% off their assessed value of 2016. It will be those properties where uh, the house is worth next to nothing. Um, people laugh at those type of houses in a normal housing market, but at a, in a crazy housing market where people think, Fear of missing out takes place. They buy up the junk. They buy the they buy the crap is what would we would say from when I was in the business. Um, they're buying properties that normally a renovator would buy um, and renovate to flip, but the renovator can't afford to do it because the land value is too high. Those properties, yes, have all have all dropped. Will these changes these be be shown? The decline in prices be shown in 2017 assessments? Again, you can go back to a show show here a month or two ago where I warned everybody in Vancouver, foreign owners of homes who have made your housing market unaffordable for many, uh, who have removed houses from your um, the citizens of British Columbia by, by leaving those homes vacant. Those owners of those homes are going to get a tax reduction because of the way your housing market has functioned in 2017. And because your property assessment is is flawed, the methodology they use is flawed. I, I understand that it sounds logical. I understand when you read through it, it sounds logical. Uh, but in but it's not. It it uh, it is based on myth. It's why foreign owners are going to watch their property taxes drop, while condominium first time buyers. British Columbians are going to pay higher property taxes this, this uh, coming year. That's just the reality of a flawed system. So depending on what you own and where the house is and how expensive the home is, your assessment is going to, to go up or go down. Whereas last year they all went up. This this time, because the market is, is correcting, goes up or down. If you own a great big three, four, five million dollar if you're a foreign owner of a three, four, five million dollar property in Vancouver, you are going to see your your taxes, your not only your assessment drop, but your taxes are going to drop. Why, if you are the owner of a three hundred thousand dollar condominium or a four or five hundred thousand dollar condominium, your taxes are going to go up. You are going to subsidize that foreign owner even more. We'll have more with Ross K right after this. Arctic Star Exploration, operated by a team of proven mine finders, is focused on diamonds in Finland and the Northwest Territories of Canada. A work program is planned for our Finland property that contains diamond-bearing kimberlite. Arctic Star trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ADD, and the Frankfurt Exchange, symbol 82A1. Please visit our website at arcticstar.ca or call us at 604-689-1799. Keep informed. Receive our weekly recap of thought-provoking articles, podcasts, and radio delivered to your inbox for free. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage, HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Ross Kay. Ross, a new study was released by a post-secondary institution that concluded that lack of supply was not the cause of rising house prices in Vancouver or Toronto. What's your opinion on that? You know, it's, it's, uh, I, I, now I, I read that report. That is a, uh, an academic, an academic, uh, professor or something, or assistant professor came up with this wild suggestion that everybody then jumped in the bank wagon and started agreeing with. Um, this is another person. I think he was, he's a, if I'm not mistaken, he's a geography professor or something. Now you gotta remember geography professors normally took, um, uh, planning courses, uh, urban, urban planning, um, the history of uh, cities in the post-secondary, uh, courses during their BAs. 
in uh, whatever their or MAs and whatever, whatever their uh, specialty is. And, and so in geography, that, that's, uh, that's about housing. None of those, I took them myself when I was in university. Th- those courses do not teach you that, teach you how a housing market functions. So when, when he comes, they come up with these really asinine comments, Jim, like they're, they're, they're really asinine from, from our perspective. It's just somebody guessing, making a headline, issuing it in a report so that they get some attention to themselves. Lack of supply was not the cause of rising house prices in Vancouver or Toronto is ludicrous. What these people fail to do in these type of reports is measure supply and measure demand. They don't understand that your demand in Vancouver, in Victoria, in Calgary, in Edmonton, in Saskatoon, in in Toronto, in Montreal, in St. John's, uh, Newfoundland, your demand has to be measured differently in each one of those areas because the, the owners of the housing stock are different owners. Not only is there demographic uh, changes, uh, pressures that come into bear, but there is also the ownership of the stock itself. In other words, because we use the term the lifetime of home ownership. So I've owned a, I've owned a home for 10 years. You are a, you, the pressures that you're going to put on the demand side are totally different than someone who's owned a house for two years or someone who's owned a house for 30. That demand changes, and it's broadly different across the entire country in every single municipality. In Vancouver's case, we have a lot of your housing stock has been purchased by foreign owners, foreign buyers who are now foreign owners. So that supply is not available to existing uh, to satisfy um, existing demand that's local. When you have to adjust your numbers to compensate for how the home ownership stock is owned. And that's how you can start to tackle the supply question. You also have a lot of investors who are purchasing properties, condominiums, because they believe real estate is a good investment asset class to hold on to and rent out. Okay, so those people are removing that stock. So there was not supply added in adequate numbers to meet local demand. Yes, overall supply in theory may have may have been able to meet demand, but that was a theoretical supply. That is, that supply never existed. A lot of it was bought up. So the imbalance between supply and demand uh, is ongoing. And it is ludicrous that someone would come out and make that statement because this is what the problem with this is, is, Jim. Academics make these statements, and the next thing you know, a politician is quoting these statements as fact. And they use whatever the politicians use, whatever statement is given to them that they believe serves the politician's own personal interests, and they'll use, they will use the statement that coincides with the benefit for the politician. What this fella has done with this, this crazy report, lack of supply is not causing the rising home prices in Vancouver. Mark my word, people. If you build 50,000 brand new houses in Vancouver and you do not allow any of them to be purchased by foreign buyers or investors, your housing prices will drop. That is a reality. So you have to take these things to the extreme to understand how foolish statements like this report are. Lack of supply. Okay, his logic in this report was you can't build enough supply to cause housing prices to drop. And I can tell you that's that's just a pile of, horse doo-doo. It, it, it's so ridiculous that, you know, this guy should lose his tenure for this report as far as I'm concerned. The credibility of the of the institution that he, he's employed at, it, 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 it should be questioned by everybody that this report was released and has made airwaves uh, in, in uh, British Columbia. 
supply and demand do dictate housing prices because supply and demand are never balanced. It is impossible to balance supply and demand in the housing stock. The pressures that homeowners who are become future home buyers again a place on the existing stock never ever aligns. It's why you have what we call the home equity pyramid. Um, it's because the supply and demand never matches. I I am looking to trade my town home in Vancouver for a single detached home. I look out I look out there and whoa, um, there's no single detached homes for sale. There's only two. Okay, I'm going to choose one of the two because they're both at a million dollars. I'm going to pick the best one. All of a sudden, the owner of that million dollar house is now looking to spend one, about 1.7 million. That's, there's just, there's, there's magic numbers in real estate. Those, one of the numbers as of today's date. Those, the numbers change with, uh, with interest rates and everything else. But that's one of the magic numbers right now. So they'll be in that one to 1.2 million dollar house and they'll be looking to go to 1.5, 1.7 million. Um, okay, now they look and they're under pressure because there's only two houses for sale again. There's always the Im- this imbalance that's out there. The only time the imbalance changes is at certain times in uh, the trading cycle. These these imbalances swing, and that's why you see house prices all of a sudden start the year over year gains as a percentage factor decreases or uh, goes negative. Or you have a major correction starting to take place where people need to sell their home, liquidate, uh, get their equity out of their house, and there are not enough buyers willing to, uh, to, to, to buy it, to fill, there's not enough demand to, supp- to support that supply. Um, and that's where a correction starts to take place. Um, you're seeing that with Westside Vancouver where uh, it's harder to sell a house today Buyers get a better selection. The buyer is buying more house for his money, even though it's still a two million dollar house. It used to be worth uh, two. Po- it would have sold last year for two point six million. Um, this report is hogwash. Ross CMHC executive Michel Tremblay, Tremblay said, "The dream of home ownership may be fading for many Canadians. With forty years of home ownership data at your disposal, Ross, what would your comment be on that?" I think the guy should be fired. I, I think he should be fired. I, 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 I don't know anyone. I really, really do not even stalwart renters who would not say if the price was right, they wouldn't like to own a home. So the dream of home ownership isn't fading. The dream of home ownership is the same as it always has been. The dream of home ownership for millennials, which every a recent uh, statistics. Statistics Canada uh, report came out about millennials are not uh, buying houses at the same rate that their parents were uh, at the same ages. Well, of course they weren't. You know, 30, 40 years ago, often you had a stay-at-home um, spouse. That stay-at-home spouse meant that the odds were you wanted to, you want, you started your family earlier. Um, so, odds are you, you purchased a home earlier in your life. Um, we also have to remember that half of our population is female. So if all of a sudden more, more, of, uh, more of the girls in our society are going to at between 18 and, and 24 are going to post secondary, going to get a d- degree, then going to get, uh, maybe a, a second degree, um, working in the workforce to c- recover the payment for those degrees, that means that they're going to start their families later. It means that they're not in a position to buy. The factory jobs that were that their parents had access to are no longer available in Canada. Uh, when I was when I was a kid, there were factories. I, I lived in southwestern Ontario. There were factories all over. That my my dad worked at one before he got into real estate. Um, my grandfather worked at one. Great paying jobs. The dream of the uh, suburbia was true. Um, the the. In, in, in both of those cases earlier, because my mom didn't get into real estate until she was in, uh, into her early forties. Um, the, uh, they were stay at home mothers. They took care of the family. The, the dad went off, did the factory job. He was made enough money where they could, could own the home. Those things have changed now. What you're simply seeing is a delay. That delay 
which I think is a great thing because we have more equality for, for uh, females out there. Um, they're, uh, they certainly are commanding uh, the respect they deserve when houses are being bought and sold. I can tell you that, Jim. Um, you'd, when I was selling houses, I never even listened to the guy. I would show the guy the basement, show him the furnace, um, show him what kind of condition the house was in, but I would be listening to the wife the entire time I'm going through the house because I know she's going to be the one who makes the decision. Well, it's nice now that they're all, the decision she's making often now is to, to delay this purchase. And that's why the home ownership comment about is fading and why rentals are up because it's delayed. Society evolves. How, so that means homeowners evolve. That means how they are going to own their homes evolves. That means the lifetime of home ownership is going to evolve. You've got to be tracking these things nonstop to understand what, what, what comments like the dream of home ownership is fading uh, really means. No, the dream of home ownership is not fading. The dream of home ownership is still as strong as it ever has been. Yes, the, the amount of information, misinformation, that a lot of the millennials have been given over the last five to six years uh, has caused some confusion in that in that group because the overwhelming um, majority of that information is incorrect. They are looking at homes today as if they were their parents in the 1990s, and you can't. It's two totally different home ownership environments. The the equity that you're paying off in your home today compared to what the interest that your parents had to pay in the uh, 1990s. It's two totally different worlds. Even property taxes alone have changed. Property taxes really have gone down versus what they used to be in the 90s. Sure, dollars have gone up, but in inflation index numbers, dollars, that they've really gone down for the same property. Um, you have TFSAs now. So maybe you're delaying your home ownership is, you know that $40,000 that I was going to use for my down payment and house so that I could get into a, a capital gains-free investment? I'm now going to put that into my TFSA. All of those things have to be considered when you're talking about home ownership. And this is where all of these people that we've talked about today are, you know, they just don't understand what I'm talking about. But your listeners just have to think. Your parents, your millennial listeners, the dream of home ownership hasn't faded, and we know that that's true, and we can help you own your home, okay? There, there is help out there for you. Your home ownership experience will be totally different than your parents. Your parents spend their lives paying interest to a bank. That's what they did. You're going to spend your lives putting money in your own bank account. It's called your house. Um, you are going to, you have a TFSA room built on to every single home that you own. That TFSA addition is something your parents never could have dreamed of. If it's utilized in the right way, it's going to set you off for just a great life. Um, if you don't utilize it the right way, well, then, you, you know, you're going to have to deal, deal with consequences later. Um, the owner, home ownership dream is not fading. CMHC should never have issued that statement. I don't know who it benefits that he, they issued that statement other than more rentals, other than people paying money to a landlord so the landlord can pay off his mortgage. Cause that's what's happening, folks. Whether you're renting or you're owning, somehow the house that you're living in is being paid for. And it's the landlord who is not paying. It's the tenant who's paying. You can be a tenant in the house that you own. Or you can be a tenant in a house that someone else owns. The choice is yours. I know that the dream of home ownership is not fading. Ross, thank you so much for chatting with us. Hey, thanks a lot, Jim. My guest has been home ownership consultant Ross K from the wealthy homeowner.ca. You're listening to HowStreet.com radio. You can find us on Twitter at Talk Digital Net. Our popular YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Questions for the show or our guests can be sent to info at howstreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. 
comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.